tired ones. Now I want to be able to occupy how to paint. So the link will be in the back below and I hope you guys enjoy this video. Ready? 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 Show yourself painting with Neo Buchanan. Ah, hello there. Good to see you again. And welcome to my brand new Art Attack Try It Yourself video. In fact, this is the second in a series of three videos in a set. But I'll tell you more about that later. Now, you know Art Attack by now. It's all about having fun with art. This video is going to concentrate on painting, but not Ooh. boring painting. This is painting the art attack way, and you'll discover some of the wonderful things you can do with paint. I'm sure you'll have loads of ideas of your own, but there are plenty of ideas here that you can try out straight away. And the very first thing to do is to figure out which paint is which, and which paint is the best one to use. <laughs> Have you ever noticed all the different types of paint you can buy? Well, there's powder paint, there's poster paint, there's the good old watercolour paint, and then down in the tubes, you've got oil paint, and over here, on my big palette, you've got acrylic paint. And what have they all got in common? You can paint pictures with all of them. But they're all different in their own way. And I guess the most delicate paint of all is probably watercolour. Now, if you just charge your brush up, with plenty of water and just stroke the top of the watercolour palette there that you get in your paint set and then just paint it on in a thin wash like that. And it's a good idea just to get plenty of water on your brush and you get this lovely sort of delicate wash that goes over your picture. And you notice one of the advantages of watercolour paint is it's actually see-through so you can still see your sketch through it which makes it brilliant for doing quick sketches out in the field. And if you just charge your brush up with even more paint, then you get some great sort of... Well, look, at, look at the way it's sort of... the colours are bleeding into each other there. It's all running into each other. Get some great effects there and just do the side yeah, of the yeah, house. Right, like that. Isn't very it? quick and very easy to paint with. I, think water I remember um, my me favorite. doing um, art now, for... Now, one of the great things um, about DGFE. powder paint or poster paint is you can mix them very thinly with a lot of water and you get those lovely washes like watercolour. I had to be honest, I... You can mix them rather in, thickly and just charge I think I enjoy it more in year and you get year this fantastic, thick, rich coat. Look at that. A real good cover of paint there. And again, just plenty of paint on. And this paint is really good for painting pictures where you want a really thick cover of paint. Or if you want to do a poster painting, hence the term, poster paint. And you can also use it straight from the bottle. Now, you've seen me do this a couple of times. Watch this. Just squeeze it out of one of those ready-mixed poster paint bottles. And again, a great effect in itself. Look at that. I think one of the most versatile paints is probably acrylic paint. Now, the good thing about acrylic paint is you can charge your brush up with plenty of water and just mix a very thin wash, see, just like watercolour. Or if you do it really thickly, you get this great sort of thick covering. But the very best thing about acrylic paint is that it'll go on almost anything. And just watch this. There's... No. Here is a question for you guys. To paint up here. And it's just a case of My dabbing on your acrylic paint. It's best if you're going to paint on something like this to do, do it you, you nice and thick. Do you use your eyes this video dries, of eyes to tag? It'll stay on because it forms like a plastic skin or over whatever it is that you're painting. Uh, oh, well, do you use your own eyes to tag Even when your foot bends in the sneaker or trainer, it won't come off. <laughs> Glad. Now, as I said there, one of my favourite paints is watercolours, but they can be quite awkward to use. However, I'm now going to let you into some real art attack tips and tricks Ooh. which will make watercolours easy and fun to do. Watercolours. 
Have you got a set of these watercolour paints? But does your water always end up looking like this? And your pictures end up looking like this, a complete splodgy mess. Well, believe it or not, watercolours are one of the hardest art materials to use. Many times I've ended up with a complete mess like this because it's all run out of control. Well, here's some tips on how to get good results from your watercolour paints. First of all, draw a sketch on nice, thick drawing paper. Watercolours work best on thicker paper. And when you do your sketch, just do the outlines and the shapes. You don't need to put in any detail and when it comes to mixing your paint just mix it with water in the lid tray of your paint box and if you haven't got one of those then you can always use empty yogurt cottons that you've washed out now the technique to watercolor painting is just simply to brush on the paint onto the paper and keep that wash going as quickly as you possibly can just keep it going down your paper like this and try not to go back on yourself even if you miss a bit just keep going and you get a nice just keep smooth going, just wash. Keep going, just keep going, going, going. And you don't have to colour it in absolutely you, you, perfectly. Just control like that wash all the way down down to the bottom. And then stop, well, in the face, stop, repeat, stop um, and allow it to dry. And you know, that is the secret like to good watercolour painting. Paint each section, then stop and allow it to dry before you move on to the next bit. That way, the paint won't all run into each other and go out of control. So I'm going to put this to one side, and that's exactly what I did with this picture. I, I, had I did each section, I allowed it to dry before I moved on, on to the next section. And look at it, it's crisp, clear, and there are no runs because I controlled the paint. So when your background is dry, then you can add on a layer of shading. But it is out of and date. to do this, no, you just anymore. make your paint slightly thicker going. and add in touches of black. And then just paint it on to the dried background and look at that. No runs at all. Perfect. Just another little bit there, like that. He's losing places to me. Just to finish off some windows. Oh, and here's wow. another good tip. It's pointless doing a watercolour painting with dirty water because you'll get all your paint a dirty grey. So use one lot of water to wash your brush with and another lot of water to paint with and just make sure your background layers are really dry and then you can add in some finer detail and I'm just blotting on some shadow in the bushes here not too much detail just some extra shadow there and then just real fine detail with a thinner brush. If you want me to be a more auto tag, or find it keep it, or sub, or the twinnies, or any other videos, then let me know in the now comments below on certain videos, or let me know on Twitter and Instagram. Of course, if you and do want your paint to run, to create an effect to, like um, reflections in water, then get loads of water onto your brush. And actually, this is where dirty water comes in handy, because you just make your paper really wet with that dirty water. See that? Just a bit more in there, get a bit of the sky reflection in as well. Make my paper really wet. And then just start to put in some darker reflections. So here we go, let's try those trees. Yes, look at that. The paint's really out of control, running everywhere. Different colour. Oh, I mean. And there it is. Try it yourself, a watercolour painting. But don't forget, let all the bits dry before you move on to the next bit and keep the paint in control. Now then, a lot of people ask me, how do you draw or paint different types of weather, especially rain? Well, rain is easy. I just cheat 
I use lots <laughs> of water. Watch this. Here's the background to a picture that I've painted using watercolours, and I've let it dry completely. Because now I'm going to put a lot of water on it, and I don't want the picture actually running everywhere. You'll also notice that I haven't painted any of the ground in. Well, you'll see why in a minute. So, OK, let's put some angry rain clouds in. First, mix lots of water with some angry purple paint, and then just streak it across the top like that. And you see why I had to wait for the rest of the painting to dry? Otherwise, I'd be in a right watery mess now. <laughs> and I'm just going to streak in some yellow to make it look really angry. And it goes. Oh, looks horrible, doesn't it? Now for the rain. Put lots of water onto the ground. And it's just a case of sloshing it on into all those nooks and crannies around the shapes that you've painted. And that's why I didn't paint the ground. And while it's still damp, paint the reflection of everything in your picture into the water. Now, I'm going to start with the reflection of that purple sky. And get those blocks of colour in. You don't need to be neat or anything. And the colours run and create reflections. Look at that, just like on a wet street. Oh, it's great fun to do as well. Just the reflection of the windows. And when that's done, leave it to dry. And when it is dry, add in some detail to your picture using either coloured pencils or wax crayons. And it's a good idea to keep to drab colours, because after all, it is miserable weather. So I'm just using black here. I'm just putting details in on the houses, like the windows and the roof line here. And maybe some detail on the door. And I think I'll use a wax crayon to just put in the light in the windows and on the lamps. Just a bit of foreground detail in here. In fact, this wax crayon goes over the dried paint beautifully. And don't forget, these detail bits will also reflect in the street. So just use squiggle reflections. Just a quick squiggle, and there you have a reflection.